So after UCLA, I got into Tufts Dental and I took out a $200,000 loan for Tufts Dental School. Hi everybody and welcome to a brand new vlog. I am so excited today. I'm gonna to talk about something that a lot of you out there have asked me questions about and might be battling. But before that, I gotta show you guys the chaos that's going on in my house. This is Sunday. Let's go. We already had one delivery, Blair's mirror came, and I ordered her a dresser, and somehow I forgot to push like um, final order confirmation. So I'm waiting for the Z Gallery like six drawer chest to come, and it's nowhere. And the guy's like, hey, you haven't even pushed order confirmation. And you guys, I have a new rule in my house. There's no shoes to be worn at all in the house. Ever since Nicolette moved out, Nicolette, I love you so much, but you guys know how I like spent all this money and all the repayment we did in the whole interior. So no one's allowed to wear shoes in the house. And I think that's a big deal. I know in some cultures they do that, so I've adapted that because it's so dirty outside. Not to be like anal retentive, but as a doctor, I know what's on the bottom of our shoes and it should never be anywhere near my white rugs. Just some saying. All right, you guys. So you guys don't even know, want to know what happened to me? Is this yours? The other day, what? Is that yours? I'm wearing it. No. I don't know. Oh, it's it's hers. No, it's okay. Where is it? Who is Blair's? No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like, are those yours? I'm like, no, it belongs to somebody who's working in the house right now. But okay, you guys. So I don't even want to say what I did, but I told you guys I'm going to be honest. I ran into a car while I was looking at Chanel purses on the outside of Chanel, right by Rodeo. I hit a car, took down their side mirror, took down my side mirror, and now my detail uh, guys are here to fix my car. And I didn't leave a note, you guys, but they haven't called me yet. I left to know, hi, my name is Nina, I'm so sorry, I hate your car, please call me, and my, you can call my insurance, I'll take care of it, whatever. They still haven't called me, so if that's you, please call me. In the meantime, look at what's going on. VHP is getting a full on email. These are the best. The best, the best, the best. We, so we have chaos out here. My sink is like not working, so we have chaos in there. And what do you guys think my new map? So we have to, I'm gonna take off my Chanel's out here. Cause this is the new, you have to take off your cat shoes. <laughs> We're getting a whole new thing. And then we had a mirror delivery right there, but I don't wanna bother her anymore, but I show you guys in here right there. All right, you guys, we have a whole setup right here. Brand new, everything going in. Oh, home ownership, right? Should I move to a townhouse? Should I just like forget it? And then let's go see, well, no, I don't wanna bother Blair. Come over here. Okay, so with that said, some of the chaos, and by the way, you guys, I want to show you. Here, come and see me in this mirror. This is my gym, my home gym. What do you guys think? I told you guys I'll give you an update. What are we in? Like day 20 now of like the New Year's resolution. So look at my side. Look at, been working on this. No implants. Just look at that incline. It's always at 10. And that helps really with back here and here. This is getting flatter. And I think overall I look much better. And you see the jeans? They're not as tight. I still have a little ways to go. And remember, I told you guys, it's not about weight. It's about feeling healthy and feeling good. And I feel like my skin looks better. My hair looks better. Everything. So yeah, you go 2020. With that said, come. We're going to sit down now. I'm out of breath. Too much exercise. So the rest of today, you guys, is going to be... I know you guys have been asking me this for a long, long, long time. Um, student debt. All right, you guys, so welcome back. We're gonna take a seat now because I got so tired. So I'm so, from walking around for like five seconds, I got so tired. No, I legit did like a good 20, incline 10, speed, you guys, I've been going up to speed four or five, and in 20 minutes, I think I lost about like 300 calories. So you can all do 15 to 20 minutes. Just do at a high incline and do 3.0, 3.5, 4.0. Today I did 4.5, which was my highest. All right, so let's get back to today's video. So. In today's video, all of you guys have asked me so many times, Nina, is it worth it to take out student loans because I can't afford to go to college or graduate school without it. What do I do? Now, obviously, when I went to college and graduate school, like yesterday, no, I'm just kidding, things were a little bit different, but not really. They were still the same thing. Do I take out a loan if my parents can do it? Is it worth it for me to even do that? Or should I just go get a job and forget the student loans? All right, so let me give you guys my little story of how I got through college, graduate school, residency, and then maybe I'll help you guys out. I mean, it's not set in stone. It's Nina's way, but hopefully my story will help a lot of you try to navigate what you guys want to do, whether you want to go to graduate school, college, or just want to get a job right out of high school. So you guys all know I went to UCLA for undergraduate, and because both my parents were physicians, we were actually pretty stable and comfortable. So my dad was like, 
you know, let's pay for UCLA. It was a public school um, and it was relatively inexpensive. I stayed in the dorms and I was like, you know, I've always been very like, no, I'll do it myself. He's like, don't be silly, you're young and we can afford it. Again, it was a public school, so it was a lot less than, a, oh my God, my sister went to like Brown, a private school. He's like, this is nothing compared to your sister. It's like, all right, fine. So they actually paid for my five years of UCLA, my room and board, etc. I always had a job and, you know, paid for my everyday things, whatever I wanted, but I was lucky enough that my parents handled my undergraduate. But when I got into dental school, my dad's like, all right, how much is it? Let me know so I can figure it out. I said, no. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, no, pay for my sister's education. I'm okay. She was younger than I am. So I was just like, I was playing the older sister thing. And I was like, I don't want you to pay for me. Make sure you take care of her. I don't want her to have any loans. I can figure it out. I always knew from a young age that I could figure it out. So I was like, no, he's like, what do you mean? He's like, I'll pay you later. I said, no, I'm taking out a loan. So after UCLA, I got into Tufts Dental and I took out a $200,000 loan for Tufts Dental School. But at the time that I was going, it was $200,000, so about $50,000 a year with room and board, with all the instruments. That's no chump change. I was, how old was I, 20, 21, to take out a $200,000 debt? I mean, it's kind of scary. I'm 45 now and it's scary to take a $200,000 debt today but I took it out then, not even knowing my future, not knowing anything. But what I knew is that I was determined. I knew I was gonna graduate. I knew I was gonna be a dentist. And I knew that I was gonna make a successful career for myself. And in time, I was gonna have no problems paying it back. So all of you out there who are thinking, what am I gonna do? Should I take out the college debt, Nina? Should I take out the graduate debt? Should I go get that MBA? This is my answer to you. Before taking out the $200,000 debt, I talked to a lot of dentists. I said, what do you think? Are you comfortable with your income? Are you happy? Did you take out loans? Did you not? Some had, some hadn't. And they were like, you know, the ones who had taken out loans, they were like, well, we live pretty comfortably as a dentist. We make a very stable income. So that monthly payment for the loan is nothing. And you make so much more that you're comfortable. So you kind of have to take out that loan to be able to get to that stable dental income. So for me, that made sense. So let's say you're going to graduate in psychology, bachelor's in psychology. Go talk to psychologists out there and be like, I have to take out $100,000 in loans. Do you think I can make that type of income first year, second year, third year out in the workplace to be able to comfortably pay off the monthly payment for my loan? And that's my tip for you guys. If you can't, you might have to reconsider it, maybe do community college for the first two years. And that's a great thing. I have so many of my friends, daughters, or sons starting with community because it's so much less expensive. So they don't even go in debt the first two years because it's inexpensive. They can transfer to a four-year college and only take loans for two years. That's so much better than going into four-year debt versus two. That's another tip and it doesn't make a difference because you graduate, let's say if you go to Santa Monica City College and you transfer third year, junior year into UCLA, you still graduate with a UCLA degree except you don't carry the four-year debt. You just carry the two-year debt. So that's another tip for you guys and there's nothing wrong with doing that. You can live at home for the first two years and you can dorm for the last two years. Then that kind of makes it a lot easier. Try to minimize your debt as much as possible and going to community college could be one of those. The second thing is get a job at college, get a job in graduate school. I always worked. When I was at UCLA, I babysat for all the professors and hint, hint, you can get really good letters of recommendations if you're their kid's babysitter. Um, yeah, exactly. No, it wasn't just based on that. I actually had really good grades and I love my teachers and vice versa. But I ended up asking one of my teachers, one of my teachers one time was like, hey Nina, can you babysit for our kids? I was like, yeah, is there any rules? And I was like, no, we like you, we trust you. And then all the professors got to know me. Before you knew it, I knew all the professors, all the professors' kids. Get to know your college, get to know the community, get to know your professors, go to TA hours. There's so much help there that you just can't get from Googling or whatnot. I didn't pay off my student loans in full until 10 years after graduation. When I had the money, I had a home, I had three successful practices, and for me, it's like writing a check and no big deal. But in the beginning, instead of paying more to the student loans, I took, I paid the minimal amount and took the bulk of my income and I put it into one business, into the second business, into the third business. And I think that's what's important. If you have your mindset on opening a brand new practice, you know, starting from the ground up with your patients, pay the minimum student loans or whatever career you're going into and take your income and build your businesses first. Because once you build your businesses, I had three successful offices. It was so easy after 10 years for me to just write a check and pay it all off. And I didn't feel it at all. And that's another tip for me. And also don't worry about it. It's 
it is what it is. It's the cost of doing business. If I wanted my dental degree, I had to take out the $200,000, right? So I wouldn't be a dentist without that. So it's cost of doing business. So you might have student debts, but then you wouldn't have your PhD degree, your master's of business, your law degree, or whatever else, your engineering degree. But do check it out and make sure once you graduate with your debts, you are able to pay it off, or that's just so not fun. Look, if I knew, if I was getting a degree and I knew I was gonna enter a position where I could not pay off the debts, on a comfortable level monthly, I probably would not have gotten that degree. And more so nowadays than not. So when my daughters talk about college, I'm like, you need to think of what you want to do. And is it going to pay off the offset of what you're going to pay for college or graduate school or PhD program or master's? So research into it, talk to people and go volunteer for people who are in that job and ask them when you graduated, how much loans did you have? What was your initial salary bonus, whatnot? And get to know sort of what you might be getting yourself into in two years and three and four. And I think that that would really help out but at the end of the day don't ever ever be scared I've told you guys over and over again I never let fear get in the way of anything fear of borrowing money fear of going to school fear of working fear of failure I don't understand that because that's not in my vocabulary or my dictionary just success and if you gear your mind and heart towards that you'll continue going forward in that direction so remember one of the other tips I can tell you don't fear getting student loans as long as you have a solution when you graduate and with that said, make sure you guys comment down below your journey with student debts, your journey with undergrad, graduate school. Maybe it's a success journey, maybe it's not. Who cares? Let me know and I'll read those comments. Trust me, I read all of them. I love it. And thank you for all the love and support you guys have shown me. And comment down below what other kinds of videos you guys want to see. You want more vlog type, you want more sit down type. And I'm here for you guys. So make sure you guys like, subscribe and comment down below. And don't forget to always keep flossing.